All right, boys, we got Fancy versus Dez. Wanted to do a little bit more of an in-depth breakdown on this game. Uh, coming into this game, I will say, I think Dez is, um, they actually have the, I think they have the things messed up. Uh, but coming into this game, Dez is one of the top players over the last couple of years, and Fancy actually just won his first belt. Now, this is a, this is a belt game. This is the Madden 25 Most Feared, uh, Most Feared Challenge. And we're going to be breaking this game down as far as what we're seeing offensively, defensively, what we can learn from these guys. Um, I think one of the best things you can literally do for your Madden game is watch what the best players in the world do and try to understand, this is most important, why they do that. So uh, first off, real quick, just want to walk through a couple of things. Dez is going to go to this formation a ton. He is in Packers on offense, and Fancy is going to be in Lions. Now, this play is... Um, out of the bunch, strong, nasty. It's an auto motion play that puts this fade here. Um, you're going to see that Fancy is going to be in the bunch X nasty, which the running back would be over here. And he's going to be running a lot of this same basic concept, right? Dez is doing it out of Packers, but Fancy is going to be doing it out of, um, out of Lions. Now, Fancy is going to be running some double safety uh, walk down defense. The main blitzes you're going to look for is edge blitz three, cover six Willie, DB fire two. Those are kind of the main blitzes within this scheme. And Fancy is going to be doing a lot of switch sticking. So as you see here, uh, Dez actually has a streak, a corner route, and then a backside in route with this cheap motion wheel. Because why do you use this cheap motion wheel? Does a really good job of beating main coverage. You have to respect it. You'll see Fancy maybe switch stick to it. And it really takes the user out of the middle. It takes the user out of the sideline, which allows Des to exploit that. Now, as you see here, Fancy sends four. And this is Fancy's base coverage shell. Um, it's an inside quarter here, inside quarter here, inside quarter here, inside outside quarter here. So this could be a third. It could be an outside quarter either way. Uh, but these are hard flats, and then the fancy is in the three rack over the middle. So what is fancy going to do a lot of? He's going to switch stick onto the quarters, whichever one is quote-unquote looking for work. So if you see combo is a streak and a corner, fancy will switch stick here to go over and help with whatever he wants. In this case, he can just stay down on this, but this would be the switch stick he needs to make, and he needs to kind of take that away. Dez going to try to go up top first play. And he is going to catch it, and he's going to get a nice game. And that's how powerful seam streaks are in this game. Against cover four, cover four does not stop it, even if the safeties are in the box uh, from time to time. Dez is going to do a lot of audible in around. He's going to go to tight open and start out with an inside zone. One of the things I want to watch this game a little bit more uh, closely for you guys is to really check, take a look at what they're doing defensively. Um, obviously, you can see the combos offensively, but look at this here. This time, Fancy sends one two three four five he sends five at the quarterback i think this is just stock edge blitz he has a quarter he has an outside guy quarter and then in this case here he's on this user and it looks like he did not put that inside quarter which is where des ultimately ends up throwing the ball making a nice fast read hard to switch stick and you're seeing one of the things that these guys are are really good at and this is where passing has kind of caught up to the switch stick they're really good at making these throws off timing. And if you can make it off timing, the switch stick's harder. Uh, you have to basically have a perfect switch stick, and, and that's hard to do. So here it looks like Fancy's going to be using the left side guy, potentially sending some pressure here. This time you're going to see him go to an, a more of a DB fire two and basically has a cloud here, a cloud here, and then a quarter, quarter. Uh, that's what it looks like for Fancy. There's that speed out. Des makes a great read here on this return route super early in the play. There's no flat route. There's no yellow route. He's honestly a little too quick uh, with that read and ends up getting kind of an overthrow. Pats his chest, kind of knows that it was a mistake on his part. And, and now we're going to see kind of what they do. But again, just notice like the pace at which Des calls his plays and honestly the pace at which he makes his reads. Des wants... Des wants to make the read within about two seconds. It's going to be quick reads. He doesn't want to have to hold the ball a lot. Um, so you see here, quick read just takes takes it, easy read. And again, it's just a lot of this over and over again. But Des is looking for layup throws. 
He's really looking for layup throws over and over and over again. What can he get com good completions on? Fancy, he's got to do a little better of a job, in my opinion, of just kind of taking away some of these gimme throws. So here, first and 10. This is a new setup we haven't seen a lot, but what if you look at this setup here real quick, what does it do? You have seam streaks on both sides. We know that the yellows drift significantly, so you have that underneath drag, and then you have this corner route, and basically you have to switch stick over here, and that's gonna open up either one of these two streaks or this drag route. So kind of reading the user, but essentially here you see, see Fancy's over here. Now he's here, okay? But now look at the read. There's nothing underneath here. So this drag is gonna be wide open and he's gonna take that drag and got another inaccurate. All right, so that's gonna bring up a second and 10 for Dez. And Fancy's gonna go to cover four quarters out of 6-1. So why does Fancy switch defenses? I'm not 100% sure. I do think he's the best in dollar. But this is a disengage blitz in which the user is going to kind of like peel out like this, basically. Typically, it's going to be just stock quarters. And the reason you're seeing a lot of this look here, the stock cover four look, is because of the seam streaks. Those quarters do the best out of anything. And then here you're going to see Dez go to this looking for an auto motion play. Here's that. And now he's got the double seam streaks. There's the switch stick onto it. Des makes the read so fast. Doesn't throw a pick on it, probably, um, you know, but could, uh, had he thrown a little bit later, that might have been an interception. Good switch stick by Fancy to, to just jump that. Fancy's got the best switch stick that I've seen. I, I think if you want to learn how to switch stick, you watch Fancy. If you want to learn how to uh, play good, solid defense, I would say you watch Des. Uh, Dez is probably considered one of the better, probably top two, three, maybe top top defensive player in the world. He's a very good defensive player. Uh, offensively, I think Dez makes the game really easy for himself, I will say, with audibling around a lot and really just trying to, like I said, like it's, it's a lot of layup throws. It's like we're trying constantly to get these layup throws where it's high percentage completion offense, which honestly I think there's something I could definitely learn from that because – I have a tendency to sometimes try to do a little too much offensively, and it, it can come back to bite me. Does look like Dez is going to settle for three his first drive, and now Fancy is going to get the ball back. And honestly, uh, with the way Dez moved the ball that drive, Fancy only giving up three there is a huge win for him because Dez looked pretty decent offensively on that drive, um, and getting held to three your first drive is never good, especially because Fancy is going to get ball at halftime. If you guys are watching this video and you really want to take your Madden game next level, one of the most easy things you can do is make sure in your settings you have your coin toss first choice set to kick and your coin toss second choice set to with wind. That's going to really help you because it allows you to have a little bit more control over the game. When you get the ball at halftime, you have a lot more control uh, over how the game flow is going to go. Now, I will say one of the things that's really interesting is at this point in the year, double mug, this defense actually, um, it used to be a four-man disengage like this. This has been patched, and this is no longer as good as it used to be. But what this has now done is now you're going to get kind of this interior blocking, and it's going to open up these edge pressures that you're going to see. So one of the base defenses from Dez is going to be the Sin 4, and occasionally you'll see this both DNs uh, walk in. Then eventually you're going to get him to send a linebacker, and it'll be a send five once Fancy starts to send the running back out a lot. So that's kind of the general layout of the defense for Dez. Another thing that's worth mentioning here is if you just look, he also has the safeties in the box. So what's a principle we take away from both of these guys so far? We take away high balls. We take away auto motion plays on offense with seam streaks. And we also take away putting those safeties in the box, typically at about a depth of seven to 10 yards, somewhere in this five to 10 yard range is probably the best for the safeties. Another thing you're seeing Dez doing is he's backing off. This tells us he's not base aligned. He's simply showing blitz out of a zone coverage play in this defense. Probably the nickel dog three buzz. I'm not 100% sure that that's what he's doing, but probably because that's going to get these linebackers to stay in here. So anyway, just some general game management stuff. Here, Fancy going to go to a nice setup out of smash return. I like this nice deep in route. And... These deep in routes, I think, are super good. So you see here we got that. 
I think that's a, that should be a slant route right there. I need to add that setup into my uh, my arsenal because that slant flat combo is so good. So you see Dez user in here, and now what you're going to see is he's going to have to choose: Am I going to guard this, or am I going to guard this? This is why this is a slant pose combo, and this is why this is so good because the user kind of gets into no man's land, and it's just hard to guard. Uh, lucky for Dez, he gets a shed, and he's able to get a sack. The, the sack actually caused a three-yard gain. So I guess kind of fortunate for Fancy as well. Fancy's going to come out in Bunch X Nasty short side and Audible. Uh, one of the other things, one of the other principles that we learned from these guys, especially offensively, is Audible around is has been really one of the best ways to play the game for the last couple of years. Pretty much on Next Gen Meta, we've seen this Audible around meta continue to evolve over the last couple of years and almost every single offensive player that you see is going to either be using motions or audibly around movement pre-snap to misalign the defense get the defense in disadvantageous situations here you see this is one of his main setups at a motion cross post he runs that a lot he takes that flat if it's not cover two a lot and it just that that setup is such a good setup at a motion cross post so one of the things that fancy does the way he plays the game Fancy is going to be a little bit more, I don't think, I don't know if the best term is robotic. Dez is pretty robotic too, just with the way he is pacing. There you see there's that four-man blitz that I was talking about with double mug. Fancy is going to be as uh, very systematic offensively. He's going to run the same five to ten plays again and again and again and again. That's the way that he plays. He's also going to do that very similarly on defense from what I've seen. Um... Fancy's defense is switch stick. Everything that he does is based around his switch stick and taking advantage of that strength of his game. So the majority of what you're going to see him do is that. Offensively, he is going to, uh, kind of similar to Dez, but I think even a little bit more, I would just say Spence probably one of the most systematic players we've seen offensively over the last couple of years. It's, it's like this, 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 right? We're not going to see a ton of freestyle plays. It's going to be... You know, five to ten really, really, really good plays. He's gonna, he's gonna, and you're noticing what he's doing here. He's coming out in short side bunch nasty. He's audible in two trips. He comes out in short side bunch nasty. He's gonna flip back to the same formation. Um, he's always basically coming out in short side trips, flipping to wide side trips, whether that be out of compression or spread. He has his setups. That's why you see those crisp, quick reads and a great drive from Fancy to start, come out, get seven. And I will tell you, Fancy, I got to say, like, really enjoyed watching him this year. I think he's been significantly better uh, defensively. He's always been really good offensively. But I think I think where he really needed to get better was defensively. And with the addition of switch stick, I think it really – it just made him a lot better player. And you're going to see that throughout this game and how this game unfolds and how he uses switch stick. He switch sticks more than most people that you watch, like – He's going to switch stick almost every play. Here you see, just see, see how that quick read, like these, what you, what you are starting to notice, which is kind of interesting, but it's these quick reads uh, that are really giving switch stick issues. It's throwing the ball on timing, throwing the ball on pace, anticipating the switch stick, anticipating throws um, is really, really helpful. I mean, look how fast Des makes that read. I mean, that's literally snap, throw, streak, boom. So Fancy's going to sit in this, uh, in this six one. And again, the basic coverage that you're going to see, it's quarter, quarter, outside quarter, outside quarter, hard flat, hard flat, and then the user in the middle. The reason this is good, it takes away a layup here, it takes away a layup here, it takes away a layup here, it takes away layups here. These are the layup throws. The layup throws in this year's game are seam streaks and flats. That You have to take that away. If you don't take that away, um, it's just too easy to play offense in this game. So here, look at this route combo from Dez. Let's just break down his, pro more than likely, his progression. He's probably going to look right here, okay? And then once he sees that, he's probably looking here, and then he's probably got the corner, and his la last read late is this check down, more than likely. So peek here. We can throw the corner off in an anticipation throw, right? So let's see how fancy defends us. And now we get a motion out. So the motion out here is, is something a lot of people like to do at a tight open. It's a motion out, speed out. Uh, this does two purposes. It pulls this flat out a little bit more, and it opens this route up. Or B, it also is going to be a nice throw. If Let's say this guy's in a quarter. This is a nice throw. So 
from a user perspective, what does fancy have to do? He has to switch over here to deal with all this. And now we have a two man game right here. So Dez is basically trying to get fancy to switch stick over here and throw over here or switch stick over here and throw over here. That's the general idea. And you're seeing this a lot with these combos. So look, right off rip, we see Fancy gets this disengage, which is great. So Dez has to throw this quick flat or this. He should throw the flat. I don't know what he throws here. So you see there, he's going to try to wait on this. So you get a man up. He's going to try to throw this over the top. Throws it on and on. I mean, that's a really, really high level throw. Throws it literally as he's getting sagged. He high points it. Dez is a high ball king. He literally is going to high ball the majority of his throws. It makes it much more difficult to intercept. And again, Dez is just trying to play high percentage offense. It's high percentage offense. There he almost throws a pick. And honestly, this is another thing I wanted to break down. So you see here again, what's fancy run? It's basically the sim four. Um, but here we have inside, outside quarter, inside quarter, quarter. Now we get a cross man on the tight end. Not sure why for sure. Um, but the user is 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 in a dead sprint here. Who's wide open? This guy. Reason I'm trying to when I want to slow this down. When you slow the game down, you learn so much about read progressions and how even at the highest level, Des is considered the number one player in this bracket, a top two three player over the last five years. He misses this read. He misses this read. This is wide open. I don't know why he doesn't throw this. Instead, he throws this, which is basically. Uh, being ran at by Fancy's user. And I mean, I think this is worth saying. Like, this probably should be an interception. Like, he should just put his hands right in front of the ball and take it for six. Um, doesn't doesn't happen. And Dez makes a... He actually gets a catch breakup. But Dez gets away with one right there. And misses a wide open read. Again, this is... No matter how much you work, you can always get better. You can always execute better. And I think that's super important to uh, to realize. Kind of an interesting combo here. Fancy's in the sin four. Again, notice the defense here. Quarter, quarter, quarter or third. Could be a third. This is a soft squat. This is a vert hook. And this is a hard flat. This is a shell that I've talked about against trips all year long. You can get this soft squat or cloud will play the tight end corner well. You force this throw. A lot of what defense is, is forcing this throw right here. Force the check down. Force them to work because oftentimes they make a mistake. Des high points it, and he's actually able to score on that. Not going to lie. I think Fancy, maybe if he soft squats there, that might be better. I don't Well, if he soft squat, then he bails down. I, I don't know. I mean, it was a good combo by Des. But I do think Fancy could have switched sticked over there and, and had a little bit more success. Here's a little five wide combo, a uh, red zone combo, a lot of drags over the middle. Just trying to find a hole. High points to Kyle Pitts. Almost catches it. And when you see, Dez is going to high point a bunch. That was a tight, tight window throw, though. All right, let's look at this replay real quick. So you see he switch sticks here. I just, I mean, I guess this is just a good combo, too, by Dez. Because it, what it does, where you would want is ultimately switch stick is here. And you would take this away. So then Fancy needs to kind of hear it. Take that away, but then that's, I mean, that's just a, it's a good combo, good play by Dez. And honestly, Fancy just gives up the big play right there and, and really, you know, I mean, could have probably saved a touchdown had he switched it better out of that. But All right, so that's going to bring up a first and 10 on the 28. And I love that. That's one of my favorite plays. That's the auto motion RPO, I believe, out of that. Uh, it's a really, really, really good, just quick, Quick throw out there. Hard to guard that. Might have been motion crossbows, but I think that was the RPO. And let's just watch a little bit of Dez's defense now. We've gonna, we're going to see Fancy do pretty much the same stuff. There's a little cover two on that right side. That should be a touchdown, but he overthrows it. And why does Fancy highball that? Probably because he's anticipating a switch stick onto that soft squat. Dez doesn't end up switch sticking. Fancy ends up missing a big play opportunity. One of the things we'll see, yeah, see the safety here. And nice little read by Fancy. It's going to take us to the end of the first. So now we're in a third and seven situation. Kind of a, these games are a little longer too. They're five minute quarters as opposed to the shorter ones. I don't know if there's runoff in this. I don't actually, yeah, there's runoff in this. 
This is a bomb play. Um, this is uh, the motion flat, motion cheat flat. A lot of times that tight end post or that little inverted streak is, is going to be a big play for you, one of those two routes. First and 10. Okay, so now Dez has switched out of double mug and goes to dollar. Okay. So here's Willie. Watch Dez's adjustments. Really interesting to me. You get quarter, you get quarter, quarter, half, or um, not half, uh, soft squat or cloud, vert hook, a cross man on the tight end, and the user here. It's actually a great switch stick by Dez because there's no flat threat. So he switch sticks onto the flat and carries this underneath. And ends up getting a nice play. I'm telling you, Dez is Dez. Dez is so good for learning defense from. I mean, he just always, he seems to always play really good defense. So again, in dollar. And here we get, there's Willie again. Boom, boom, boom. That's a 7-4. Now we get a man up of the slot corner on the tight end. But basically the same thing, quarter, quarter, quarter. This could be a quarter, but I'm pretty sure it's a, a cloud um, and then a hard flat. So the throw should go to this out route here. Or the running back, I guess, wide open. Good read. Just takes what the defense gives him with that running back. That's why you leave that vert hook there. That's why that vert hook's a key zone. Uh, if I was devising a trips, trip shell, I think the most basic and complete trip shell is actually what Des ran the play before that with the quarter, 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 um, and then the soft squatter cloud and a vert hook. Running base here from Fancy. Fancy loves to run base. Notice that when he runs base, he's going to hand it off uh, with the running back on the side of the quarterback's throwing arm. So Will Levis is right-handed. You want the running back to the right. You're going to get a faster handoff animation. If the formation was flipped, it'd be a slower handoff animation. And the run wouldn't be as uh, as effective. It'd be easier to shoot, easier to blow up. Another thing to always want to look at is the red zone combos, red zone shells. How do people play defense? How do people get red zone is the easiest area of the field to get a stop. Uh, so here we see a five yard in, a hitch, and notice that this hitch is on the numbers. Okay. And then we get this stemmed out route. So the idea here is we want this cloud flat to suck to the hitch and then throw this in the back corner of the end zone. Backside, we have a little flat wheel combo, and then a check down in route. So you see here, look at Dez's user. That's actually a great read from Fancy um, to take that tight end flat. And one of the things these guys do, man, is they, they can hit these routes on timing. This is something we really didn't see in the first tournament that you're starting to see a lot more, is you're seeing these timing throws. People are, it's an example of offense kind of catching up to the defense and switch sticking not being as big of a big of a challenge so anyway that's going to bring up third and goal um this is going to be dig return at a bunch by flex or or fancy going to flip it notice what he's doing here on the right side he actually stems i believe this is a stem down zig and then he has a smoke, or no, not a smoke, an in route, gets bagged, and now Fancy is going to be forced to take his three. So they both get, uh, both of them get a essentially a red zone stop, and now Dez gets the ball. Remember, Fancy does get the ball going into half here, so you're starting to kind of get into the critical moments of the two minutes, of the two-minute warning. So for Dez, you probably want to make this last drive of half if you possibly can so that you can go into half up one possession. Go into this PA verticals play. We'll see kind of how fancy he's playing defense. Okay, so I want you to look here. So you have quarter, quarter, quarter. See, this is, this is a vert hook and a soft squat. Why would he do that? Let's just back this up real quick. Why is this not an outside quarter? So super important question. Because if this guy's on a corner route, there's no flat threat here. So a soft squat will carry the corner, okay? But let's say this guy's on a streak. 
Well, the inside quarter is going to take that away. So what Fancy is doing defensively, and this is something super important. I've talked about this before. Divide the field into grids like this. And if you do this division, now what you're able to see is there's really there's really four main grids, and then there's this middle area of the field. So let me just kind of illustrate. So there's the hash mark to the numbers on both sides. And then there's the numbers to the sideline on both sides. Okay, where are the receiving threats? In this case, there's a receiving threat here, 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 and here, right? So if we have a quarter and a quarter, the only thing that can get over the top of, like, let's say a cloud or soft squat is some type of wheel, which this formation does not have. Uh, actually, I think this one has one here. So because of that, now we look at the actual coverage that Fancy ultimately ends up running. He has a vert hook. And then look at this. There's a corner. Look at this zone. This is a soft squatter cloud. On this right side, I, I don't know what this is. This could be a cloud. I think it is a cloud. He double flats. There's either a cloud or a quarter, but I think it's a cloud. And then we have these two quarters that Fancy can switch stick onto. So just a little bit of game planning about understanding defense defensively. You always want to understand like how can they attack you based on what they have. Um, and then obviously tendency does play a little bit of a role in that, but a lot of it is formation. So bunch strong nasty goes back to it again. You can't really threaten this side. So Watch, it's a backup. He's going to back him up, and this should be a saw squat and then a quarter here. Now we get this auto motion, and, and it looks like we kind of interesting coverage, but now we get this auto motion, and so this auto motion is what really can, I guess, make it hard because, and that could have been a D-line pick, but, but that auto motion uh, turns that formation into a double set as uh, relatively quickly, so it's kind of hard to... Hard to adjust to it. Now we get a fourth and seven from Dez. It's kind of a, a head scratching moment. Trying to figure out what are we going to call here. Fourth and one quarters call from Fancy. And this is an interesting route combo, but he's going to basically bluff this cheat motion. So you see how Fancy switch six here? It's because he's playing the streak. So now where is Dez's eyes over here? Okay, that's manned up and bagged. So now you get this late switch stick. Does not need to switch stick here. Now you have R1. It's a huge, huge play of the game. Fancy kind of over adjusted, over switch sticked. And Dez ends up ends up uh, hitting him over the top with a big play. Dez is going to go for two again. Uh, this is that trips in Detroit. No, I don't think he is going for two. I think he's going to take three here or take his extra point. So now Fancy gets the ball back. And honestly, it's a good situation for Fancy. If you have to give something up, giving up a one play touchdown is not a big deal uh, because you do get the ball back with two minutes. Again, he just didn't need to switch stick anything. And he just, I think he thought that man up was going to eventually get, get beat or he's, you know, maybe trying to jump back to the post. But maybe he even accidentally switched to the wrong guy. Could be a possibility. But there we go. This is Dez. Again, I want to point something out just, just briefly here. Look at this flat quarter, quarter, quarter. What's this? Soft squat cloud. And then we have a vert hook or a man up here. Looks like a, a hook curl. And so as you see, I mean, this is literally what I was talking about but uh, out of dollar. But this is now out of double mug. It's the same thing. Fancy does the same thing where he hits that route. It's a good read by Fancy. If you're Dez, you want to switch stick to that flat and go over and take that away. I think he was just a little late. But that is the that is the foundational coverage cell for, for trips. Here we just get man across the board, gonna send some pressure. Fancy tries to go up top. Almost almost makes a great play. And Fancy, honestly, just called the wrong play at the wrong time. That verticals play, a lot of vertical routes, hard to beat the blitz quick, kind of a well-timed blitz from Dez. And now we get a third in inches. 
And Dez in that double mug. Notice he's using in the middle linebackers. Brings the slot corner in, sends six. Gets a throw to sack. That's a good send six. What Dez is doing a good job of, too, as you watch this game, is he's timing these pressures in key moments. That time when he wanted to send six, he clicks onto that slot corner and basically effectively turns the defense into a better version of 6-1 with the double edge pressure. I personally really like running um, running, running the defense like that with a slot corner hovering over the center just because it gives you the most amount of pressure threat. You can do a lot from your pressure and coverage from that alignment. Whereas if you're using the, and here on a fourth and inches, Des goes to 6-1, kind of an interesting call. Fancy's going go to go to trips, which gives 6-1 a lot of trouble. Does this motion and streak? Oh, and that's just not very good. This is one of the worst play calls, I think, in the game. Uh, I mean, look at this play. So, look at Des sending six. He sends six. Fancy sends five out. This blitz is honestly terrible. As you see, it barely even comes in on send six. Fancy has a streak, a motion in, little seam throw, and then a backside in. This in and this seam are pretty much attacking the same thing. And I think just Fancy doesn't expect the pressure. And then his hot read is his R1, which is open. But look at this. If this is a streak, it's open faster. Because it's a wheel, it takes a little more time. And it's open. And Fancy's throwing an open player. Like you see here, he's throwing R1. It's an open player. He just gets hit as he throws. And it breaks it up. So... Fancy makes ultimately fancy makes the right read. I just feel like he called the wrong play in that situation. If you go to halfback angle uh, that he'd been running pretty much all game, I think he ran that the previous maybe on the second down call. That would have been an easy, easy, easy completion against this. Another thing that you're seeing is these stemmed uh, on the RPO plays. If it has an out route, you can stem that out route all the way up or all the way down. If you stem it all the way down. It basically will run like a flat route, and then if you stem it all the way up, it'll run like a streak. So that's another little kind of tip that you learn from watching these games is some of the things they're doing and why. Again, you want to look at what they're doing, but also why they're doing it. So look at what Fancy's doing almost every time in this formation. He's manning this guy up a lot. I'm not sure why. I would probably assume it maybe to try to help defend that seam streak threat to the tight end. Here you get there's that hard flat quarter, 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 hard flat. So now, what does Fancy need to do? He needs to take this away, but then he also needs to take this away. As you see, he chooses here. This is a great read by Dez. Now that quarter is completely out of place, and that's an easy read. Now, all this is happening while Dez is getting screamed at. It's great pocket presence. Stands strong in the pocket, makes a good read. And now we're in the second, uh, second quarter. This is honestly, I mean, this is Dez's game to lose at this point. Fancy does get ball at half, so you're never really out of it. But this is definitely does his game to lose. Getting a couple stops. And now really in a key situation too. This is also a really big drive for Fancy. Uh, the reason why this is a big, big point in the game for Fancy is because you really need to hold up to three. If you give up a touchdown, it's hard to get back in the game. It's not hard to get back in the game, but like the game's starting to get a little bit out of reach. Not out, like it's starting to get a little bit more difficult if he scores seven versus if he scores three. Because if he scores three, then it's not that big of a deal because you just you have a couple different ways in which you can get back in the game. If he scores seven, you have to get a full fledged stop, maybe two stops in the second half, which it's hard to do, right? Notice Des clocking here. He's using this is super important. He is using the clock to ensure that Fancy doesn't have enough time to go down and get seven and potentially even go down and get three, okay? Uh, he is going to go to this four uh, strong at a bunch tight end. This is um, an illegal formation. I put out a tip on my uh, X account. It used to be called Twitter. I'm trying to, trying to force myself not to call it Twitter. Let's go to the tight end. Is that a tight end post? It's a tight end post. I don't know what... I don't know what he's doing on that. And there it is. All right. So he scores. This has been his red zone play. Look at that. Look at that triangle receiver. Is this X? That's not X spot. It's just a stem down corner to the red zone line. He runs good. Good read. That's a big touchdown for Des. And at this point in the game, you know, you're watching this game. 
you pretty much think, okay, Dez probably has this wrapped up. This is a critical 37 seconds for Fancy because he needs to get down there and at least get three. Him getting ball out of half is really what's going to help him a lot in this game. To be honest, Fancy had a lot of control over the game up until really that stop before half, and then the game completely flipped, and now Dez has a lot of control of the game, especially depending on what Fancy does on this drive. So notice that Dez going to dollar. Why go to dollar? Because really, ultimately, Dez is just trying to make sure Fancy doesn't score seven. Kind of an interesting combo here to the right side again. You see here, this is just flat out cover four pretty much with a man up there, send three. That's pretty good pressure for a send three. That's actually really good pressure for a send three, I'm going to say. So we go bunch nasty for fancy, ends up burning a timeout. Oh, gosh. Oh, Dez took a timeout because he's down to 15 seconds. I forgot. Fancy didn't have any timeouts. Yeah, this is not a good, not a great situation for fancy here. All right, so we've got a lot of middle of the field combos. Maybe looking for this wheel late, a little corner. Uh, duh, duh, duh. All right, third and twelve. You, whatever you do, you can't throw a pick here. Um, you can't you can't get Des ball back, and he's just gonna run an inside zone and probably just take this to the half. Actually, gets a pretty good run into that. But I do think, yep, they're gonna go right to half. And Fancy's going to get the ball coming out of half. So 23 to 10. And we'll see what Fancy does now. There's a nice little slant post combo. Love that play from Fancy. This is a very underrated route combo that he just did. Uh, take a look at this. This is something you should add to your game. This could either be a post. It could be a, um, like a 15-yard stemmed in if you wanted to do that. And then he uses an out route here. Um, I think that's fine. And then he, the, the idea here is really just the slant post feature. Uh, this is just so hard to guard, but you use a cheap motion as your clear out. So I actually love this play. I'm going to definitely add this one to my game. As you see here, look at this. You got the flat. And now watch how this develops. So you see how he switch sticks here. But look at all this. Look, look at what this out route does. It pulls this zone out. It pulls this zone out. And now there is literally... A massive amount of space. Look at look at how open this is. There's all that space in the middle. Slant post is proving itself to be the best passing concept in 925. Yet again, it's just a little bit of a different way to get into it. More seam streaks this year around it. And more of a slant route than a drag route. Last year was a drag route. This year is back to that slant route. Last year, slants ran really weird, uh, which I think is ultimately why. Uh, but here we see and he's going to run motion cross post pretty much every time. Love this little quick read here. That's a nice read because that guy's going to suction to the seam streak. Real nice read there. And and you're seeing okay, now he's starting to he's starting to move. He's starting to put his plays together. He's starting to basically play like he's been playing for the last two tournaments and really just kind of had a wacky first half. So we got two seam streaks, a cheap motion. There's cover four from Des. Send everybody. Good read to get the ball out to the back. And then uh, I actually like that little high low there on the right with that corner route, and then basically the running back on almost like a drag route, but it's a it's a flat route from the backfield, so it doesn't bump the D line. Goes to trips here, and another slant post. You're seeing a lot of slant posts. Gets out of there with Jay Chase. Jay Chase not going to finish the job. Going to bring up a red zone situation for Fancy. Fancy looks like he likes eye close down here. And let's see what Dez likes defensively. Dez is going to be in the 5-3. I think that's 5-3-3. Three, three. Oh, man, that didn't work out for Fancy. I don't know what he was doing trying to pass. Is this 5? That's 5 down lineman. I think that's 5-3-3. Three, three. That's not 60 out jacks. It might have been. Who knows? Third and goal. Notice what Des does. This is something I'm actually a big believer in down here as well. Is he he basically says, like, I'm begging you to pass the ball. Like, I'm begging you to pass the ball. I'm going to do everything in my power to stop the run. I need you to pass. Fancy ultimately ends up getting in. But you want to do everything you can to stop the run down here. Make them have to pass the ball. 
Uh, this is a nice little two-point dot that Fancy dials up here. This is out of um, dig return, but this guy is an outside receiver smoke screen. It's actually wide open. He just totally decided he didn't want to throw that. He'd rather throw the ball out of bounds. A little Monday morning quarterback syndrome from me. And now this is the drive. This is the drive that Fancy needs to get a stop. It has to be a full-fledged stop pretty much. And this is where Fancy's going to have to play some defense. There, Dez throws right to him, and actually Fancy catches his pick. Dez's face, I'll tell you, Dez high balls to a fault. And sometimes at that time, I think he got a little bit of an inaccurate on that high ball and Fancy able to get the pick with the pick artist. That's why that's a big reason why in this year's game, you want to have pick artists on your safeties because if you have pick artists on your safeties, you can you can and they they throw a seam streak and they miss the throw, you can actually catch the ball, right? There you see Fancy going back to that slant post combo, giving Des a lot of issues right now, and again you're just seeing the challenge. There's a seam streak, gets a busted coverage, and he's able to get a touchdown, and Fancy's right back in the ball game. And now we have a tie ball game. That game really flipped, and that's the power of getting the ball at halftime and then also the power of getting the stop defensively. And now all of a sudden, a 23-10 to 10 game is now a 23-23 to 23 game with plenty of time for really both sides. So if you're Dez, you need to go down and get seven. If you're Fancy, get you another stop, whether it be a field goal stop or a, a legitimate full-fledged stop here. So notice another thing uh, that I think is worth mentioning is that Fancy ultimately gets back into dollar. He was in 6-1. Now he gets back into that double safety defense, which this is this is the defense for him. This is, this is the best way that he plays uh, defense is by switch sticking around on a dollar. He's got the, the backed up corners. The alignment of dollar is very, very, uh, very effective for switch sticking. See here, good switch stick on the corner. And I mean, you're going to watch. I mean, if you watch how both these guys play, Dez is going to adjust a lot more than Fancy, but Fancy is going to switch stick a lot more than Dez. And I think you're starting to see, you know, why switch sticking is so important. There's that out route. He gets a man up. Nice read from Dez. That's a tough read. It's a quick read. Able to get a nice completion there. And now we're going to get into the tight open. All right, so tight open here. Well, inside zone. Fancy able to contain the run. Brings up a second and nine. Going back to Durham. Now we get to send five. I haven't seen this in a while. When Fancy sends five, it's typically clouds out here and quarters here. This pretty much, this might have been a soft squat and a yellow. I don't know what this was over here. Um, but this yellow is designed to take that away. There's manned up. Just not able to play it very well. Does, I mean, ultimately holds it to one yard, but. Kind of a super, kind of an example of fancy kind of playing a little bit aggressive. Now here on the third down goes back to six one. I honestly don't love this. Um, don't love this call. But we'll see what happens. I just think he's more equipped to handle things in dollar than he is in six one. Dad's gonna go to that bench combo and talk about a timely pressure. Gets this. Now watch what Fancy's doing off this. One of the things that's super underrated, he's using here. Okay, look at look at how he switch sticks quickly to get here to take ultimately make that a harder throw and the pressure comes in. And really the blitz is really what helped him there. Because that's probably an open throw. Live from Full Sail University. I gotta look up that school. That's the Madden. Madden College, I guess. All right, so fourth and nine does kind of needs a conversion here. If he doesn't get a touchdown, he's not out of the game, but it does make it harder. But we do have a five-minute fourth. Keep forgetting that. So another motion out by Dez. Going with the wheel here. Ends up getting a delay. That's a really bad delay. I mean, it doesn't completely change the situation, but now it's fourth. Fourth and fourteen is a little harder, in my opinion, than fourth and um, fourth and four, uh, nine. 
Fancy goes to the DESD. And she's going to take everything away. Almost gets a high point wheel. Fancy going to get that stop. And now Fancy can go up by seven. Literally a 21 point swing in the matter of almost a quarter has been uh, has happened here. And a fumble. And Fancy gets blessed. I don't know why he's out there trucking with Will Levis. Obviously got to assume he was trying to slide there. He got bailed out big time. Um, now, obviously, you know, there were some things early on. Des threw a D-line pick. I think Fancy threw something that was kind of like, eh, it could have been a pick. But man gives, man takes. Throws flat. Good read by Taylor or by, by uh, Fancy. And, yeah, that's going to go into fourth now. So now we're into the fourth quarter, five minutes left. Kind of the situation, though, guys, is regardless of what happens here, Des is going to get the ball back. So you got to kind of watch out for that. Throws the wheel. I actually like scoring fast here. Um, I like scoring fast here because Des is now going to have to – it's going to give Fancy a chance to get the ball back. That's why I like scoring quick there. So 30-23, to 23, Des is going to get the ball back. And we'll see what he's able to do. Going five wide, first and ten. Loves this play. Look what Fancy's in. Cover four. Throws that speed out. Good read. I think people should throw speed outs more. I feel like people, they'll throw it once and then they just don't throw it anymore. Motion out this wheel on the right. That's a nice quick throw. That's actually kind of there, but good switch stick by Fancy. Tell you, I just really like the way Fancy plays defense in this game. I, I think if you watch his dollar, I, I just think it's superior to everything else he could do. A little cross, man. It's just enough pressure. And that's really the story of dollar this year. It's just enough pressure. It's not the best pressure, but it's just enough pressure. All right, Dad's going to go to Trey Y Flex. Corner streak. I like this combo. Watch that tight end corner. He threw that for the touchdown. Switch sticks to it. It's honestly a little bit of a late switch stick. I would have liked to see Dez throw it, honestly. I think it was open. But I think that was a fourth down. Dez just taking his his um, conversion, which is fine, too. Going to go to curl flat with a streak of the tight end. Um, speed out. A lot of stuff going on on this play here. That's a little bit more what we're used to seeing out of this. Speed out. He's going to throw that for a touchdown. Going to catch it. Oh, and Fancy strips it out. Another big play for Fancy. I'll tell you, a couple plays here down the stretch that really favored Fancy. Second and 10. Ball on the 40. Let's see what we have combo-wise. Little post. Good switch stick. Drag route. It's a good read by Dez, too. Not throwing at it. A lot of good Madden in this game. A lot of good men in this game. I will say two really good players going out of these. These guys are really good. Um, I will say Dez barely beat Kobo. I can't remember if. I think Dez was the one that gave up. I think it was. I think Dez kind of let Kobo back in the game. And then Kobo threw a, threw a pick in overtime. Kobo plays the game like crazy now. I mean, he just audibles around to everything. We thought Dez. You think Dez audibles a lot. You should watch Kobo play this game. All right, tight open. We got a flat. We got a corner, backside post, and then you should see the speed out on the right. Right here. Nice switch stick. That's a really good switch stick. That I uh, just. That's a really yeah. It's a really good switch stick. Does it get in an accurate? Fancy did get off of it. Probably would just stayed on it. Here we go. We're gonna go dagger the skimbo setup here. Oh, that's a touchdown. Ah, oh, fancy. You can't do that. Ah. Does he give him the touchdown here? I mean, it kind of looks like he does. If you look at this play, like, Dez is going to throw this, and this is open, and fancy switch stick is basically just saying, I'm going to go for the pick. If I – this is – I do think this is somewhat strategic. So he's going to go for the pick if Dez throws this. This should have been where the ball should have gone. Uh, in my opinion, 
because of the clock. But again, it is what it is. You're going to have to score it either way. And he's losing. But that forces Dez to either throw this or this. He can't throw this. So, I mean, my opinion is you throw this and don't get fancy the ball back. Dez chooses to take the touchdown. And, again, this is a little bit of a wash of a situation just because Dez is, a, Dez is losing the game. Uh, but he catches the touchdown, and now he's up. He's up. Uh, what's interesting here is this decision from Dez. So I I think the rule is you can't onside kick unless you're losing the game. So what Dez is going to do is he's going to either – I honestly feel like you almost – ah, it's just a hard situation because three minutes, 33 seconds is really easy to clock. It's really easy to get a field goal. Like it's a really good position to be in. And field goals are automatic past us, you know, pretty much past like the 40. So if you don't get the onside kick, Fancy's is going to get the ball. He's going to need to gain like 20 yards, and he's going to get a field goal, and it's going to be over. Dez decides that he's going to go for two. And what Dez is going to do here is if he he's actually going to try to get it. I don't know if he try to get it. Um, and the reason why, because he's actually going to get it here. You know, he throws that, catches that in traffic. So now he's up a possession, okay? So kind of puts Dez – so now Dez has to kick it deep. The problem – I guess I guess it's one of those things where – I mean, I guess you just got to get a stop. But I don't know. that. I almost think maybe if you don't convert that, then you can onside it. Then you guarantee you have a much better chance of getting the ball back. But – Dez chooses to convert it. Now he's going to be in a position where if he gets a stop, he wins the game. But it's really hard to get a stop at this game. And Fancy just needs to get the ball here. Um, so we're looking at about 60 yards in this game. That's not a crazy thing. But, I mean, starting out here, <laughs> not looking great. Third and 11. Fancy's kind of messing around a little bit with it. It's kind of one of those things where, I mean, I guess you play for a stop. I don't know. It's It's a hard decision. Throw the slant, get a nice out of there. Now we're in a fourth and three ball game on the line here. Really surprised Fancy's on a first fourth down this early. And that's a crazy throw. <laughs> if you if you don't realize the seam streak is the most powerful play in the game. There's base. There's your field goal. Done. That's it. I mean, ultimately, Des does have three timeouts, so Fancy needs to get a first down. The other thing that I guess is a little bit advantageous about getting that two-point conversion is that if Des gets the ball back and he goes down and scores three, he wins the game versus ties it. So, I mean, just kind of an added layer of, I don't know, like what would you do there? But first and ten, run the ball. Des is not going to take a timeout. Second and five, I think you run the ball again here. Fancy's going to throw it. I think you run right here. Get on the third down and two. Maybe he just wants two pass attempts. It's a good hook, but yeah, I mean, just a screen. Yeah, see, you save him a timeout by doing that. Like, you probably run, I probably run the ball there. A lot of different ways to play these situations, though. A lot of different ways you could go about it. Fancy doing a lot of underneath stuff. There's that motion streak again. And I mean, in these situations, one of the things we've seen Des consistently do. Fancy ultimately gets the first down, so it's not that big of a deal either way. Now Dez is going to call his timeouts, but one of the things that we've seen Fancy consistently do, or Dez consistently do, is we've seen a lot of Sen 6, Sen 5 pressure, man coverage look. Those motion streaks are not going to be a good option for you if you're going to do that. Anyway, here's going to be second to four, and now you're going to see the full clockwork from Fancy trying to get a first down here. Dez does a good job of stopping the run, so now you're in a third and five. Kind of a key decision here. Do you pass? The problem is if you pass, you run the risk of giving him a timeout. And again, it's that situation I was talking about. Like, this is a tough decision. I think you run. But I, I mean, again, you could go either way here. And he's in 6-1, which is strategic on Dez's part. He's not going to let you run the ball. He's going to send heavy pressure. There's an incompletion, fourth and five. Now, this is a really big decision. I actually love the decision you're going to see. We're in a fourth and five situation. Dez has been selling out, putting everybody in yellows and hard flats to basically try to give himself a chance to get the ball back or get you to throw like a, something underneath or a pick. Fancy's going to go for this. The reason he's going to go for this is, again, the situation scenario I said. If 
he kicks a field goal, it's not very hard for Dez to get down the field with a timeout in his pocket and get three and win the game. So what Fancy's going to do is he's going to try to get the first down. If he gets a, if Fancy gets the first down, he's going to win the game. Dez is Dez is going to put Fancy in a position now where he can either get a touchdown or he gets stopped. Notice the coverage that Dez runs. Every, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hard flat, shaded down yellow, shaded down yellow, hard flat. I don't know what this is. I think this is just a three rec that's like right here. I mean, everybody's at that. Everybody's at this. Fancy does a really good job here of forcing the switch stick here. This is open. He high does he high point that? I think he does high point that. That to me is risky because of the overthrows, but he's able to get it and able to get that touchdown. That's a big touchdown. And the reason that's a big touchdown is really twofold. The first reason, and again, I think you actually run the ball here, uh, or at least take a speed. Don't throw anything stupid because you can't afford a pick two. But the reason that's a big touchdown is because now Dez has to go score a touchdown versus scoring a field goal. Uh, so to me, it's a super, you know, kind of really delicate scenario that was just by both players. Last time he missed that little smoke screen, and this time he hits it, and now he's up by seven. And now this is where I think Fancy's at his best when he's able to play Bimba Dope Break, switch stick around a lot, and take stuff away. You know, you see here a lot of Sim 4 from Fancy. For the majority of what you see Fancy do is Sim 4. He's not trying to get instant pressure. He's just trying to get just enough pressure. Dez going to do some scrambling around 30 seconds. Again, idea is just keep the lid on the defense. You're going to see these seam streaks. Little speed out. That's a really good route by Dez, able to catch that out of bounds. I'd like to see Fancy put curl flats on the field just to kind of take that throw, make that throw a little harder. Double corner, double corner, double streak. Got a speed out on the back end here. I like that speed out from Dez. Now we're going to go flat fade, maybe try to ag. Catches that. There's your timeout. You got 20 seconds. Dez putting himself in a position where he actually has a good shot. So this is not all dead. Going to a lot of trips with a lot of streaks. I'd like to put that running back up a little bit more. I feel like that's a little early of a cut. And you see there, just can't complete that. Yeah, that's 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 why you want to you want to put that speed out about ten yards. If you don't put the speed out at ten yards, ten to fifteen yards, I feel like sometimes they just don't catch it uh, in bounce. Uh, so you see there, and again, notice what he's doing a lot of a lot of speed outs. A lot of speed outs, taking advantage of those outside quarters. Turn to the left side. Takes his flat, gets caught in bounce, and that's going to do it. Fancy wins his second straight back-to-back -back belt winner. Big win for Fancy. Great showing from Dez. Great uh, all around. Thanks for watching the video, and if you guys want to uh, get any of my full ebooks or anything like that, make sure that you join our school community. I'll put a link in the description to the site. If you guys want to go check that out, but congrats to Fancy on his second belt.